Okay, welcome to business. Um, nice that we're getting there by class seven since the class is called business uh, taxation. But as we explained, the reason we started with the personal, um, I think, makes some sense to most people. But I guess the first question we would want to answer is, what is business? And the Income Tax Act actually does define this for us in Section 248, which, um, if you haven't already been there, contains um, endless number of definitions. And the way they define business is basically by saying they list a lot of things, but at the end of the day they're saying it's an adventure or concern in the nature of trade. And well, that sounds like just about everything. And it is just about everything. But they're very, they very specifically say, but does not include um, employment. Well, we'll just leave it at that. They also use this term office, include an office or employment, but for our purposes, those are really the same thing. So really, we can define, think of business as everything except what we've just been talking about for the first six weeks, which is employment. So there's a lot to read in uh, these sections, and, and, and we do want you to read them. What I'm going to try to do in this video is, is hit the highlights. Um, one, because we're, we're kind of coming at this at a time right before the midterm, and so I know you're not going to spend a ton of time delving. And so let's just talk about the, the, um, the kind of high-level high highlights here. And the most important thing, so when we look at section of the textbook, 4020, the separation of income and capital is fundamental to the Income Tax Act. Okay, so, but what you need to note though, or, or is, you know, take some comfort in, is that this is also, so this is fundamental to the Income Tax Act. So a lot of the Income Tax Act and, and case law around this is basically figuring out what's income and what's capital. But just remember that this is also fundamental to GAAP, or financial accounting. So when you think about things like dividends, why are dividends not on the income statement? And why are things that are on the income statement on the income statement, and other things that aren't on the income statement aren't on the income statement? That's all about separation of income and capital. So a dividend is a cash outflow that looks just like any other cash outflow, but it's not earned, it's not uh, incurred to earn revenue, and so it's not on the income statement. It's exactly the same principle that we use in tax to say, okay, what's income and what's capital? And so as the textbook mentions, um, an, an analogy that's often used is, here goes my artwork, is the idea of a tree and fruit. Okay, my colors aren't working. So it needs to be green so you understand it's a tree. So the tree and then the fruit. So here's our apple. That's the fruit. Of course, it needs a little stem. So in this analogy, hopefully it works for people, the apple is income. And the tree is capital. And what it's saying is, you know, you need you need a tree in order to produce to produce fruit, and so you are going to spend money on things, and you are going to have inflows and outflows related to that tree. But really, that what we want to tax when we define income is the fruit, the sale of the fruit. And what complicates matters is that some companies sell trees, right? So trees are their inventory. So it's important to note that one. One company's inventory may be another's capital assets. Okay, so think about computers. So let's see, do an example. Computers, not compers. Computers are what? Their inventory for Future Shop. But their capital assets for, say, an accounting firm. Let's use KPMG. Why? Because it has the fewest letters. So, capital assets for KPMG, inventory for Future Shop. 
you know, also important to note, important to note that Future Shop itself also has some computers that are capital assets, right? So it gets a little bit um, confusing here. But why does it matter? Well, it matters a lot because the Income Tax Act, by its very name, wants to tax income. And it wants to tax different kinds of income differently. And so in the case of, uh, as, we, as you learned in 201, on the personal level, inclusion rates are different. Meaning we tax 100% of every dollar that you, every taxable dollar that you have in income, but we don't, we, and right now anyway, we tax 50% of your capital gains. And so it matters a lot how these things are treated and there have been endless cases of taxpayers trying to say, no, 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 that thing that I did, that transaction I did that I made a lot of money on, that was a capital transaction, not an income transaction. And the government of course has said, we disagree. So how is this, how is this uh, determined? So how do we, how do we do it in, in the Income Tax Act? Well, we talk about this concept of badges of trade at section 4023. And so really, this is, um, you know, if you're in my sections, this is like the duck test, right? If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, etc., it's a duck. So really what we're asking here is does, so this is uh, summarized in 40, or put much more um, technically in 4023, and I'll refer you there, but this is my paraphrase. Does it look like your normal business? So it being this transaction that we're trying to figure out how to tax. So it's sort of kind of on a transaction by transaction basis. Does it look like your normal business? So what you're in business to do, um, are you doing it to earn this money, this particular dollar that we're thinking about? And so the things that, that we look at here are frequency, right? If you're in the business of, of um, selling apples, you don't buy trees all that often. The nature, sorry, the nature of the asset itself, okay, re relative to you. So is it something that would normally be used, the appearance of it? So it's basically, you know, in some ways, a smell test. What does it look like? Does it does this look like the business that you're in? The trigger. Why did you make this sale at this particular time? Did you do it because this is what you're in the business of doing, or did something sort of force your hand? Like you, you, you thought you needed more trees, but that, as it turns out, that there's not enough demand for your apples, so you're selling off some trees. What was the trigger um, for it? And then the last thing is the holding period. So if you are buying and selling things on a somewhat rapid basis relative to what an, another person would be doing in your same line of business, then that's going to look a lot more like income than it is like, <coughs> excuse me, like capital. But guess what? Guess where we are? I can't draw that bracket that way, but guess where we are? All of this funnels to the same idea that we dealt with with residency which is intention. So we're back in the land of case law where it's not, it's not, there's not really a test out there where you can say, aha, just spray this substance on the transaction and we'll know whether it's an income tra transaction or a capital transaction. It comes down to case by case analysis. Okay, and that's just where we are and we'll look at some, some questions in class to, uh, to solidify some of this. So, um, the next thing we'll look at, so I'm going to skip by a few of these other sections. So the next thing we're going to look at in this video, probably really the last thing, is section 4070, which is this idea that we know all about. So we have this idea of profit, right? We want to tax profit. And we all are very familiar, way too familiar, with financial accounting net income. And we know that GAAP and the, the CICA handbook and IFRS have worked very, very hard to try to get that number to be a meaningful number on a yearly basis and meaningful and so that it can, can report um, uh, well on the, the um, operations of the company in that particular year. We know all about that. Well, what we need to do now is say, okay, well, the Tax Act is going to think about a lot of these things the same way. 
So in a lot of time, most of the time, a lot of the time, something that is considered net income for financial accounting will be considered net income for tax. Because the, 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 as we said, the principle of separation of income and capital is exactly the same. So the, they should get along pretty well. But there are times that they don't. Times they disagree. So for whatever reason, the rules that um, financial accounting and tax have, and, and the Income Tax Act have come up with are different. They may be different in they one thinks it's an expense at all and one thinks it's not, or they could be different. So it could be existence. They could differ in existence of it. So it, it, we don't even call it an expense. You call it an expense, we don't call it an expense. But much more frequently, it's timing that they differ on. So yes, of course that's an expense, but we think it's an expense of this particular year. You, financial accounting says it's an expense or, or revenue of a different kind of year. So a good place for us to, to use as a point of reference is the statement of cash flows. So hopefully you have some familiarity with this, so this is, is, um, is, some, is helpful. So statement of cash flows, if you recall, in the indirect method, which uh, is really the, the only way things are done these days, the indirect method in the operating section, right? So the other two sections, uh, finance and, and investing, are uh, they are as they are. There is no indirect or direct. They're basically the direct method. But here, remember what we start with. The starting point is net income. And then again, my paraphrase, but hopefully this will not uh, harm you in any way, we add cash items that's not in net income. So what we're saying is we're not gonna start from zero and build up, we're gonna start from net income, but we're gonna add some things in that financial account, that our cash, cash has come in, but financial accounting hasn't counted as income yet. So we're gonna need to add those in. And then of course, we're gonna need to take out things that are in there, so non-cash, that is in net income. And once we've done that, we get down to this cash flow from operations. So the principle is exactly the same that we're gonna use to, to build up, so to, to go to do this relationship here. We're gonna use as our starting point financial accounting because it's sitting there to be used, and as we said, most of the time, a lot of the time, they they agree. And so we're gonna use that as the starting point. So using the statement of cash flows as our point of reference then, uh, we'll look at, you can look at page 195, and there's a, a nice exhibit there, but basically what I'm gonna do is, is do a rearrangement of it that I think um, with combining what's in the textbook plus this, I hope will help to solidify uh, what's going on for most people. So we start with accounting net income. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove negatives. So what that means is something that has reduced net income but that shouldn't be there, that, that shouldn't have reduced it. Tax would not have reduced it by that amount. So since it was reduced, we need to add back that amount. So there are really three categories of these, disallowed expenses or reserves. So these are things that tax says, okay, financial accounting, we, we, we get what you're doing. You know, we, we, we don't completely disagree that these things are happening, that these things are expenses, but we disagree on the timing or, or whatever the amount. We just, we want to disallow them. We want to take them out of our number. We also want to have something in here that you all don't, always take into consideration which is the reasonableness of things and then the last thing is anything that is capital right so for financial accounting so capital losses are going to have reduced if you recall uh, an income statement a gap income statement we do have these these losses on on the sale of capital assets that are we call paper losses we want those removed from the net income for tax and, and the, the tax treatment of those losses will be put back in somewhere else. So we want to remove the negatives. The next thing we want to do is we want to remove the positives. So we'll switch color here just to liven things up. We want to remove positives. And there aren't very many of these things, right? Because in general, 
the the w the more tax, the better, according to the Income Tax Act, or more income, the better. So the only thing we're going to remove here are any capital gains. So if you've included capital gains, listen, we, we do want to tax those. We do want those in eventually included in what gets taxed, but not in the way that financial accounting deals with them. So we're going to put those back in. And so then what we want to do is we're running out of colors here, but we'll try uh, this. We'll try purple. Add. We're going to add missing negatives. So what we're going to do is say, okay, um, again, it's just it's the same thing all over again. Counting net income has said, here it is. Here are all the expenses we're going to have. And tax says, no, 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 no. There's some things that we consider to be deductible that you didn't. And so some of these things are going to be related as we will see. So some of, there's going to be some link here and say we, we took it out here and we're going to put it back in here. But for now we can think of it as of, of them being separate. And then the last piece will be to add, hopefully you can figure out what this is going to say before I write it, add the missing positives. So we'll look for things that tax says, you know what, there are some things that we um, want in net income that you don't have in net income and so we call these things inclusions and we specifically specify what they are and once I've done all of this I've started with accounting net income I've added a bunch of things I've subtracted some things and I've added some other things and I get down to um, income for tax okay and this is something that we will get somewhat used to doing uh, as we move forward.